Hello, welcome to Pakhun Gorka Educational Channel. Today, online practical topic is blood sugar determination, and I have considered these points for this online practical. One, general consideration. Two, clinical significance. Three, method. Four, principle. Five, reference range. That means normal range. Six. Sample material. Seven instructions given to patient. Eight requirements. Nine standard operation procedure. Ten preparation of report and eleven case studies. Blood sugar test is mainly performed to find out if a person is suffering from diabetes mellitus. There are estimated about 73 million cases of diabetes in adult population of India. In urban areas, the percentage of diabetic persons is about 11 to 14 and that in rural areas is 3 to 8 percent. In clinical laboratories every day, you will find live CBC samples, large number of blood sugar samples every day. And this test is very important since diabetic persons can get proper treatment only on the basis of accurate test report. Blood sugar means blood glucose. Blood sugar rises mainly in diabetes mellitus. And hyperglycemia means increasing blood sugar. Moderate hyperglycemia is also observed in hyperactivity of glands like thyroid, adrenal and pituitary. Hypoglycemia means decrease in blood glucose level and it is observed in increased secretion of insulin and in prolonged fasting. Method Blood glucose test is performed by glucose oxidase method and it is an endpoint reaction method. Principle of the test Glucose is oxidized by glucose oxidase enzyme and gluconic acid and hydrogen peroxides form. On hydrogen peroxide, peroxidase enzyme acts and the release oxygen oxidizes the chromogen in the reagent 4 aminophenazone to form pink color. It is measured on a photometer and the formed color is compared with a known glucose standard. Normal range means reference range of blood glucose. During fasting, level of blood glucose remains in the range of 70 to 110 mg per cent. Following food, blood glucose rises up to 170 mg per cent and due to the action of hormone insulin, it decreases and 2 hours after food ingestion, it again remains between 70 to 110 mg per cent. Samples for blood glucose test Instructions given to the patients first For fasting blood samples, patient must fast for at least 8 hours and report to the laboratory with a fasting urine sample. For postprandial PP blood sugar determination, patient must report the laboratory 15 minutes early and a blood sample is collected 2 hours after lunch. And patient should collect urine sample also for postprandial urine test. And then the container. The container for glucose test blood collection is a sodium fluoride tube, a fluoride tube or a bulb. It is important to note here that if blood is collected and kept in a tube without sodium fluoride anticoagulant, glucose present in blood is converted to lactic acid by enzymes present in red blood cells by glycolysis and in 2 hours glucose values decrease significantly. Under these conditions, false low glucose values may be reported. Hence, blood should be collected in sodium fluoride and 2 
requirements are on patient's plasma to diagnostic kit for glucose test it contains glucose region and glucose standard 100 mg percent three test tubes four test tube rack five centrifuge six dispenser seven push button pipette eight water bath nine vortex mixer and ten photometer or semi auto analyzer well the reason for why urine samples are also required along with blood specimen and the reason is in the urine of a normal individual detectable amount of glucose is never present in most instances since urinary tubules reabsorb glucose completely when blood is filtered at the glomus however if blood glucose rises above 170 mg percent kidneys cannot reabsorb high glucose load and then glucose passes in the urine hence blood sugar level 150 to 170 mg percent in the range is known as renal threshold for glucose as shown in the figure presence of glucose in urine may indicate that renal threshold for glucose might have passed by high blood sugar level in the procedure first plasma is separated by centrifuging blood at 3000 revolutions for 10 minutes and one thing you have to remember here is plasma should be completely free from hemolysis since red color of hemolysis may interfere in the later on photometric readings next step is preparation of working glucose reagent and it is prepared by using deionized water as specified by the diagnostic kit literature then the sop the test standard operation procedure is like this one the test tubes are labeled as t t for test s for standard and b for blind then 3 ml of working glucose reagent is added in each test standard and blind 3 then in the test tube labeled as t 0.02 ml plasma is added and mixed well afterwards in the tube labeled as standard 0.02 ml of glucose standard is added and mixed well and in the blank 0.02 ml of deionized water is added and mixed well and remember here for the addition of reagent uh, dispenser is used and for the addition of the plasma serum and deionized water push button pipet is used fine next all the tubes are placed at 37 degrees centigrade in a water bath for 15 minutes or if water bath is not there the tubes also can be kept at room temperature for 30 minutes and then immediately reading the taken of the developed pink color and the readings are measured using a photometer or a semi auto analyzer uh, on 530 nanometer wavelength or by using a green filter and plasma glucose milligram percent is calculated by using this formula optical density of test divided by optical density of standard multiplied by 100 while taking readings on photometer test and standard readings are noted by setting blank reading to zero optical density one example is if optical density of test is equal to 0.360 and that of 100 mg percent glucose standard is 0.210 then mg percent glucose in plasma is equal to 171 kindly refer to my videos on use of photometers and semi 
or to analysis on Raful Gorkar educational channel YouTube. These videos will give you very good idea about how to handle both photometer as well as semi-auto analyzer. One important thing you need to understand here is with every set of tests, one standard and one blank is always recommended. That means if number of samples are 10, then you will have a set of 12 test tubes to perform the test. During internship, you will use a semi-auto analyzer for reading optical densities and glucose report. In that case, all the requirements are exactly the same. Only thing is that instead of 3 ml of reagent, you will use 1.0 ml of reagent and rest of the standard operation procedure is the same as shown on the left hand side. And then uh, it is necessary to program auto analyzer for glucose test like this and then when blank standard and test end mixtures are then introduced and auto analyzer displays the test glucose values with a report printout. It is very important to develop following specific skills before you perform biochemistry practicals. First of all, proper collection of blood to prevent hemolysis of blood. The sample which is placed on the extreme left is a proper sample and the samples decides that these are hemolyzed samples and hemolyzed samples cannot be used for one step biochemistry methods. Two, proper use of push button pipettes. And three, proper use of dispenser. Both these equipments should be used accurately for proper dispensing of the specimen as well as reagent. Next is mixing technique. When you add specimen in the reagent, proper mixing is very very important to get end result. Then proper use of standard operation procedure. SOP should be followed dicto. Next is proper use of photometer or semi-auto analyzer and next is waste disposal and yes of course you have to study table viva questions which will be used for the examination purposes. A biochemistry test report is prepared like this. This is a blood and urine glucose test report of a 45 year old female. Just compare their test values with normal range and then you will understand that both fasting and postprandial values are increased moderately and in postprandial urine glucose is present which indicates that renal threshold for glucose was crossed. Now see this report of a 16 year old girl. Her fasting blood sugar was very high and in urine very high percentage of glucose was detected and also presence of ketone bodies. These observations indicate a clinical condition known as acidosis and ketosis and that was the reason why her brief indicated fruity odor. Now see this video again to get answers for following table viva questions. 1. What are the various causes of hyperglycemia? 2. What are the various causes of hypoglycemia? 3. What is renal threshold for glucose? 4. What method is used for blood glucose test? 5. Why blood for glucose test is collected in fluoride anticoagulant? 6. What is the principle of glucose oxidase test? 7. What is the normal range of fasting and postprandial blood glucose respectively? 8. What is the clinical significance of blood glucose test. Once you are able to perform 
blood glucose test accurately by understanding endpoint one step method you will be able to perform tests like serum uric acid albumin total proteins cholesterol triglycerides calcium inorganic phosphorus etc very easily the methodology is exactly the same as shown in this line diagram only thing is you should be able to use diagnostic kits and related literature very well to perform sops of all these endpoint reaction test for that purpose you must see our related video on youtube kindly refer to chapter 10 in our mlt book or chapter 6 in our biochemistry book for more information on biochemistry laboratory test i thank all of you for your kind support to my educational channel on youtube and i suggest you that you must see all online lectures before you attend your uh, regular classes and practicals in your respective colleges next time i will bring you one more online educational video till then remain focused on your studies and stay safe with all safety precautions and protocols bye bye